Hello all developers, welcome back again. I am Nikhil from India and hope you all are doing great. So in this video tutorial, we are going to explore about script include. Script include is used to store a JavaScript codes which executes in the server side. We create a script include to keep a reusable functions and based on the application or use, we create custom API by creating a class like glide aggregate or glide record and benefits of script includes are we can share the functionality across the server site and we can call the function whenever it requires and we can also make the script include client callable and we can call the client callable script from the client side using the glide ajax api and we can extend the functionality from the existing script include and that concept is also called as inheritance there are three types of script includes classless classless is nothing but the function new class and extended class so let's see one by one by doing some practical example so let's go ahead so guys let's begin with on demand classless script include for that from the application navigator if you will type script include under the system definition you could see this script includes so let me click that menu item and it will open and show you the list of all those script includes which already being created and if you want to create new just click this new button so from here we can create our script include and the table of the script include is this and if you want to directly navigate to know the list of script includes you can just type like this in the application navigator search work so i am going to fetch the ritm variables and value for that i am going to create function what is function we create function to group the line of codes so that whenever it requires to use that line of codes we can directly call the function instead of writing the same number of line of codes again and again and that will also increase the readability plus make the function reusable and that's what we are going to do so right now it has created the default class based script include but we don't want that we have to create the function so while creating the on demand classless script include you have to specify the same name as script include name let me copy the script include name and here function and the script include name and we also need to pass an input then only this function will perform some operation and based on that it will return some value because we are saying that fetch ritm variables but which ritm we have to tell to that function and only it will be able to fetch ritm variables and value since when we submit the catalog item it will create the records in three different table ritm table sc item option table and sc item option m2m table sc item option m2m table is because to relate the ritm and the variable records so i have uh, this two tables that is sc item option and another one is sc item option m to m so if i'll go here you could see the list of variable records and right now we are not able to identify that for which ritm these variables are created relate that we have this table is the item option m to m and this dependent item this is nothing but the sys id of this variable record 
and if I'll copy this one and uh, not where to paste let me paste here so if, if you see this, this ID and uh, with this dependent item value here it is same So what we can do uh, when we will get the array team number we can go to this table we can go to this SC item option m2m table and from there we can easily fetch the information about so let's write glide record to fetch the information about uh, those variables of particular array team number so variable option underscore m team because this is the only table uh, that relates the array team and the variables let me copy the table name new right record and inside that I will paste the table name after that underscore m2m dot add encoded query so in this uh, to relate the RITM we have this request item field this is the backend field name of this parent item but uh, we are going to pass the RITM number so here we can do we can add this dot and number and we will say equal to RITM number and post that I will ask to the database using the query method and uh, because for uh, this array team we have two variables we have two variable record created in the sc item option table so i will use the while loop and option m2m dot next as many records i will receive for that i will prepare an object by saying variable info and first i will store the equation of the variable so Uh, this is the field SC item option which is referring to this SC item option table record. So let me copy this one and option m2m dot that field name inside that because it is referring to the another table. So we can do this dot work and So think that this is the uh, sys id which is referring to the table records of this sc item option list table. As I said we can do the dot work. So you have to think it like this is the record of this is the record I think this one. Okay, it is different but uh, if you will compare this sys id and with this one it is same so i want item option new and it is also referring to the variable table record and that keeps the dictionary information of catalog item variable 
let me copy this dot and wherein we have a field called question and the backend name is question text so to string variable info dot another i want to store the value and to initialize the value we have to travel to till here we don't have to travel to the variable dictionary dot value dot to string in this object i will push into one area let me create that list dot push okay after that i have to return this answer this list area i have to return from this function return list and this function can be something i miss here okay this is the while this function i can call from any server side scripts let me save it it means we can call from the background script also for testing purpose let me copy the function name i'll go to the background script tool let me open that and variable underscore info equal to i will call that function and inside that i will pass the rtm number uh, which is where is that which is this one because it will return array of an object so we have to convert into readable way so we can use json dot stringify stringify and variable info and we don't have any replacement feature here i just just for the formatting i have kept the empty string and for the indentation space i keep two so you could see business justification is the question and the value is this uh, this is the question and the value is this and uh, let me open this rtm to show you so you could see while submitting the catalog item uh, this rtm has created and inside that we have these two variables this one and this one so if you understand to create the on demand classless script include uh, that is nothing but just the function so friends let's look into another example by creating class based script include so let's create our own custom api and the name i'm going to give is general info and make sure that you are also following this naming convention standard which is pascal case there are three types of cases and if i will write like this abc underscore variable this is called as snake case and if i will write like above abc variable uh, this is called as pascal 
is and if I will write like AVC variable and this is called as camel case so you should aware of uh, this naming convention standards name so let me save it and I want to make it accessible from all application scopes so for this uh, we have to create an object and when we will create object this function will be automatically call so what I want here is that when this function will be executed while initiating an object or initializing an object I want to set the property into this object and this is nothing but it will refer the current object this dot instance underscore name and, and to get the instance name in the system property we have the records not sure it will show here score name so you could see uh, this is the system property and if you want to call the system property you can call by using the client system object method gs.get property and in this method we have to pass the property name another I want is the instance URL underscore URL is dot get property and for that we have another system property and the name is glide.servlet.uri glide.servlet dot uri and I knew that uh, for this it will not so but this is the name using that you can access the URL you can identify the URL of your instance client dot crv sublet dot uri ok uh, let me save it so what I will do I will create an object of this API and as soon I will create an object this function will be executed and this is referring to the current object so I can access by doing the dot work so let me go to the background script And copy the API name and it's always best practice to use this API name uh, not just the name of this script include if, if it is in the same scope then you can directly call by using the name but prefer to use the API name GI and to create an object you have to use this new keyword and after that the script include name earlier we have created the function only that's why we wouldn't have to create the object of that for now we have to create the object let me cheese dot info let me access that property here instance name 
cgi dot as i said this this will now refer to uh, this object is the current object so you could see the instance name and if i will try to access the instance url it will give you the instance url so you could see okay now in this api i want to create the function that will return you the url of the particular record and so in the function we will pass the table and the id and for that that function will generate the url so i'll say generate table generate record url one thing you notice that uh, this general info dot prototype the general info class has this prototype key uh, more like creating an object and this is this prototype is also an object that you can able to see is that this initialize is the key name and in this function is being initialized here also we have to initialize function so in this we have to pass the table name and the uh, record id or sys id now we know the table name we know the record id and if i will open any record of if you will notice in the url here see after this instance url we have the table name then dot do then question mark then this is the you can say a query parameter equal to and this is the sys id for uh, this form it is saying minus one meaning that this is the new form so we have the instance url so equal to let's generate uh, this dot instance url table name and after that we have to add the question mark and the id equal to we have to concatenate the record id and let's return this url and let's save it whether it is new record or existing record if you will call this function will return you the url so i'll say inc underscore record url equal to gi dot get uh, method name is generate record url wherein we have to pass the table name incident and uh, let's pass this is id if it is a new record we have to create then we will pass like this and if it is existing then we will pass the actual sys id the correct one cs dot info inc record url run the script so you could see the the url here uh i'm not able to copy let me copy this and let's open the new tab and if i will paste and hit the enter you could see it has opened the new form and if i will pass the correct id so you could see okay that is fine but let's suppose you have to add the parameters uh, like uh, this this param stack equal to true like that if you want to specify for that also what we can do here 
will pass uh, will create another parameter by <laughs> saying uh, url underscore params and that will be an object which will be in key value pair and better uh, i will create variable called params what is the value okay true this is the value so i will pass uh, this object params here now i have to add after this right additional underscore params i will say okay what i will do i will use one loop called for in variable key means uh, this object keys and from where okay from this object and you also know that uh, if i will write like this params and in the square bracket if i will mention this key it will return the value true so using uh, this for in loop we can access the key name as well as the value if we will write like this so additional params first i will check if there is okay no i don't think we have to check but let's see if there is an value inside an object then i will concatenate by this ampersand after that plus and the key name equal to plus the value okay that's it and this additional params i will concatenate into this url variable which is the string type and let me save it so let's run the script so you could see here the url and you could see uh, it has also taken our parameter which is this one and if i will open the new record i want to prefill the value for that we have another key called sys param underscore query so for that i have copied this query and i will go here and i will open the new record and i want to prefill the values let me keep it as it is and sys param underscore query okay so i am i'm going to prefill the value but the number it will automatically generate i can remove this one so i will prefill the value of short description and caller id and let me run the script let me copy this url and let me go to the new tab and paste here and let's hit enter button so you could see it has prefilled the color and the short description 
so hope you understand how to create a class based script in Clue. So friends, let's see how to extend the existing script in Clue. For that also I am going to create the new script in Clue. And this time I will say that task info to know about the task information let's suppose i want to know that what all users are being assigned for active tasks okay so if i will go to the task list So with the help of uh, this table list, I want to know who all are being assigned for active task. So if I will group by assigned to, so you could see there are 26 users who are being assigned for tasks and I want to exclude uh, this empty user. So assign to and if I will scroll down below assign to assign to S I G okay assign to is not empty run so there are twenty five users. And another filter I will add active is true run okay so there are 23 users who are being assigned for active tasks same approach I can do by writing the glide aggregate but not the glide record scripts so I'll go here and the function name I am going to give is assign users okay and function variable ga new light aggregate and i'll pass uh, this one the table name and after that ga dot add encoded query copy query and let's pass here ga dot add aggregate and I want to know based on uh, this assigned to right so will count based on assigned to field assigned to the backend name of the assigned to field and as you seen that I have grouped by assigned to the same thing I will do here ga dot group by sign underscore with that I'll use the while loop and as many records I will receive that many times this this inner code of this while loop will be executed so each time I will fetch the assigned to username And I will say that ga dot get display value
to okay this is the sign to user and another i will create variable to store the number of tasks assigned to this particular user so j dot get create and the same as i have written above i have to pass a uh, two parameters and post that here i will create list and i will push this assign to when counts value list dot push and inside that send to and don't confuse with this key and value okay this assign to is this variable and this assign to is the key of uh, this object total tasks and count and after doing this operation we have to return this list array so return list nice let's save it So it has saved. Now, what I will do, I will extend this script include from our general info script include. Okay. For that, let me uh, cut this. Tolix. I have to write this object dot extends. object and in this we have to pass the two parameter one is the script include name which we want to extend here now this script will become extended script include so this is this will be our second parameter and the first parameter will be uh, this first argument will be this one API name which we want to extend okay let me save it now I can access this function assign users from uh, this script include because I have extended that so let me go here and let me remove all these things we are task underscore info equal to gi dot and let me copy the function name users No, if I will print here this dot info task info. Let me run the script. So it hasn't printed print anything. Let me check. Save it. Uh, 
maybe the spelling which I have written here is not correct, right? So what I can do, I'll go here and tense object. Script include, okay? Wait for a while. Extends object. No, it is correct. GI dot assign user task info. Okay. Let me go here again and task info. We run again. Send users. Let me return something else. Okay, here I will return anything. Okay, you could see that it is working, but why it is not returning anything? We run the script. Should return this empty array. Okay, so you could see I haven't written the ga dot query method. Let me run the script. So you could see it has written this many object, which is not readable for now json dot stringify for the formatting i'll give this two additional arguments so you could see assign to I mean this user being assigned with three tasks and another user with 12 tasks